I started coming to the shop probably when I was like six or seven. I found it fascinating even at that young age. My dad always said, you can never build a house from the roof down. You must start from the ground floor up. And it was the same with their shoes. My grandfather came from Constantina, Latvia. He was the first one to come of a family of three brothers and a sister. And there was one brother that was also a shoemaker. My grandfather was a shoemaker. And my grandfather's father was also a shoemaker. The story goes that my great-grandfather made boots for the Russian Tsar. Being Jewish, I think he had no choice. <laughs> my grandfather arrived at, actually my grandfather came to Canada first, and then from Canada he came to New York. Um, and then from New York, he moved to Ellicott City, uh, right on Main Street, that's where their first business actually started. The building is still there. And then they moved to Laurel, they lived on Main Street, um, two different buildings, but it was the same kind of setup. They lived downstairs and the shop was upstairs. AM Croups was the premier place to get boots in Laurel. And everyone said that you knew if you were going to get a pair of boots, you would go to AM Croups. My grandfather got started making boots, uh, jockey boots, just per chance. A um, jockey that he had met um, came up to him and said, could you copy this boot, or do you think you could make something like this boot? And my grandfather said, sure, I can make that. And that's how it started. I don't think any of them really had any idea what the business was going to do. None of us were business people. None of us had a business head at all. Um, I think it just prospered because we made a good product, um, didn't cut corners, um, and it just enjoyed what we did. And all of the jockeys that I spoke to, I mean, they, that was just it. They would say, oh, of course you go to AM Groups, that's it. You go to Groups to get your boots, that's it. I mean, there was no, there wasn't, I can't even go into more detail because it was so obvious to them that that was the only option that they didn't need to explain it anymore. Um, and I knew what Groups was because of my experience in the historical society, but I think that a lot of people in Laurel aren't aware of what a treasure they have down um, on C Street with Groups. My mother was an artist, my father was very handy, just in the house and besides doing this. And um, I just I picked up on that and really liked to do things with my hands. So I graduated from college as a fine art major and then I started working here. But it was too much family and my aunt was here, my uncle was here, my father was here and it was just suffocating. So I moved away, I moved to Michigan for several years and then my dad was ready to retire. My uncle had already retired and um, he said, do you want to give it a go? So I said, okay, I'll come and I'll try it for five years. I'm not doing any book work. I don't want to have anything to do with insurance. I don't have anything to do with taxes. I just want to make the boots. Well, Randy's, uh, Randy's been here a couple years before. I've been, I've been here almost 30 years. And uh, she has a high passion for art and shoes. And she has a little bit more passion for shoes. I'm more about getting the job done, but she has more of an artistic eye of, of putting shoes together. And uh, both of us, our collaboration together, we, we get the shoes done. Rick's a longtime employee. He's been with me 30 years. I have to say most of the employees that we've had stay until they die. Uh, Rick, like I say, he started when he was 18. Uh, his grandmother came with him, and I remember him being very, very quiet, and I wasn't going to hire him because he barely said boo. And she just said to me, you hire him. He's a really good boy. <laughs> Chloe's my second dog. She's a great meter greeter dog. Uh, you know, she goes out and meets who's ever coming in. She lets me know when somebody's coming. Um, but she's very friendly to everybody. Everyone still recognizes the quality of the boots and the history of um, 
the, you know, the business that they do uh, and how important that's been to people at the park, but not just at Laurel Park, from all over the world. And as the racing industry has declined, people have been making less money and less able to buy her boots. I would say at its height, we probably were doing two and a half to three racks a day, which is um, 25, 24 pair on a rack. I mean, we had big boxes going out every day, stacked up. Uh, it was good. Yeah, the economy has affected us the last couple of years in a big way. We've lost a lot of customers from the uh, horse racing industry here in Maryland. And a lot of customers worldwide, a lot, and a lot of people are downsizing, and that trickles down to us shipping them shoes. So we've had to take a lot of cut, cuts here. For years and years and years, I've always said, I don't know how we're going to make it. I don't know what's going to be tomorrow. I will just, I always say, I just put my blinders on like they do with racehorses, and I just go in and I do what I need to do, and we just keep going along pretty good to be making it through these rough times. We have a lot of really faithful clients and they always tell me, I don't know if they're kidding or they're for real, but when they buy, you know, and they'll say to me, are you going to go under? Are you going to close up? And I'll say, I don't know. And they say, well, call, call me. Call me first. I'll get three or four pair. I have a lot of people that say that to me. My conversations with Randy, um, she told me that more recently, people will buy cheaper boots um, just because they don't have the money to buy a pair of hers. She also said that, and, and I witnessed her repairing boots that men had sent back that they had bought in the 70s, and they needed the heel fixed in you know 2010. So um, I think that alone is a testament to how long her boots last and what kind of quality she's working with. Uh, people always ask me, you know, well, what are you going to do? How long are you going to be here? And I'm like. Well, we're hanging on by a thread, but then I look around and I say, well, we got a lot of thread here, <laughs> so hopefully we'll hang around for much longer. I don't know how much longer I will be able to do this. Um, my body is taking, it, it's taking its toll on my body. I'm just getting old, I mean. So I'll do it as long as I can, or if somebody comes along and makes me a great offer, or I don't know. <laughs> Even though my son always tells me, you're crazy. Why do you go in so early? You're the boss. I'm like, it's just what I do. I come in at 5.30 in the morning, and we work, and I work most weekends. Um, it's just what I do. He says, it's all you do. All you do is work. And I said, well, i got to pay the bills, and I like it. You know, it's pretty good to have a job that you like. Pretty lucky. <laughs>